Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today I'm going to be sharing one of my games from the previous Title Tuesday this week. And I'm going to be sharing one of my Title Tuesday games every week after I play one of them. And if I miss them, I'm just going to share another game from that previous week. And in this game, I chose to choose my game against Ginger GM, which if you don't know is Simon Williams and an extremely famous person. If you Go in this profile over here, you will see that he has over 200,000, almost 200,000 views and over 30,000 followers. But anyway, after we go back here, today after I'm going to be sharing one of my games against him. And in this game, it was a draw, but mainly it was because of how stable the opening theory was. So white starts off with d4, knight f6, knight c3, d5. Bishop f4, bishop f4, b6, e3, bishop b7, knight f3, e6, bishop e2, bishop b4. So this line is good for black, mainly is because that when white brings his knight to c3, he doesn't have any moves with the c-pawn, so bishop b4 is a good move to exploit this pin, and I've played this m multiple times. Castles, castles, and here my opponent plays knight e5, which tempts me to play bishop takes c3, and that is the best move, but instead I just play knight b7, and this line is an extremely calm line. Both sides don't have anything really to play for in this position, it's more or less drawish, and that was the result of this game. Bishop d3, c5, queen f3. And here I decide to take the knight on e5, which makes things more dynamic, but it was probably not the best idea. Back here, I should play something like c takes d4, and after e takes d4, I could have played bishop takes d3. And although white has this extremely menacing possibilities on the king side, black should be fine here after knight e4, which completely shuts down this side, and I should be fine here. But anyway, after we come back, in this position, I play knight takes c5. But after knight takes c5, my opponent played d takes c5, which looks intuitive because you want to bring the bishop to the g5 square and bring your queen here and bishop h6. But d takes c5 was actually not the best move, and this move actually offers black more chances. In fact, in this position, bishop takes c5 is a much better move. And if black is not careful enough and starts trying out knight d7, then you're just exposing all these pawns over here. And after knight e2, knight c5, d takes c5, something like c4 can be actually met by bishop takes c4 due to this pin. And if you can't play c4, then white's gonna play something like c4 soon, or c3, which is equally as strong. And white has all of the chances here, although the computer says it's equal because black has the bishop pair and a better pawn structure. Practically, especially in the blitz game, white should be easier to play here. But however, my opponent played d takes c5, which allowed me to take on c3, after pawn takes knight e4. And now I've centralized my knight, which attacks the weak c3 pawn, also threatens this annoying knight d2 fork over here. So here my opponent decides to play bishop takes e4, which is not a good move and just gives black a clear advantage. Instead, here my opponent should have played the risky move c4, and after something like knight d2, it can be met by queen h3, which attacks this pawn. So knight d2 does not work. And here I could play something like f5. And after e takes f6, queen takes f6, c takes d5, e takes d5, bishop takes e4, d takes e4. This position would be slightly better for white than in the game. Because in the game, after bishop takes e4, d takes e4, we notice that the pawn structure is almost symmetrical, except white has this grueling double c pawn over here. And this, these two pawns will hurt white's position a lot because they give black the queen side advantage with his amazing pawns, which were mine in this case. And after queen g3, bishop h6 threatened, so king h8, rook f d1. Here, I made this decision of playing queen c7, which is a better move than queen e7 because of white's next move, bishop g5. And here I played h6, and after bishop h4, most people in my situation 
would be tempted to play g5 and that's exactly what I did in this position but there was a much better move so take your time and maybe you can spot what black could have done to practically win this game in this position I played g5 which is not the best move although it's good but rook g8 this extremely strong move is extremely painful for white first thing now it threatens a much deadlier g5 because now the rook will be protecting the square as well so here, what can white do? White must give the g3 square to his bishop. If f4, e takes f3, and white's position is completely busted. If queen f4, g5 is still a double attack. Thus, in this position, white must play something like queen g4. And this is one good move, but there's another one that my opponent might not be able to see. But after queen g4, queen takes e5 is just a completely free pawn for black. And now a c3 pawn's hanging, and now white's best move is actually to play queen f4 and to trade queens. And now black can play something like f6 to shut down this bishop. And now, for example, if rook e7, bishop c6, rook e7, rook e8, black has a free pawn for nothing and should be able to win this position. Here, however, I played the much more intuitive move, g5, and this move allows perpetual, but my opponent did not go for it. In this position, I played f5, so I wasn't too keen on going for the perpetual, and in fact, this position is better for black, but it's not too clear. e takes f6, queen f7. So here, I'm supposed to be better, but after queen f7, I allowed my opponent a perpetual, which he did not accept. However, in this position, I could have played the move bishop d5, and this move shuts down the rook here, and now the queen has no perpetual 2 because of queen h7, and now there's no rook threats whatsoever due to that bishop. Queen h4, king g8, queen g3, king h7, and after rook d6 here, I made a horrible blunder. I queen, and queen takes f6, the simplest move here is just the best move. And now after something like queen h3, king g7, rook takes e6 is met by queen takes f2, so that doesn't work. And otherwise, white must play something like queen g4, and here just queen g6. And here the best move for white is probably just to trade off and get into this type of position, but black should be winning here. However, I decide to play a, much, a move that just loses on the spot, and that is rook 88. And this move just doesn't make any sense because white just gonna bring his rook up here anyway. And this is what my opponent played, but this just gives me so much more chances. In fact, in this position, white just has an extremely simple move. So take your time and hope that you can spot what white should have played in this position. Okay, so. In this position, white has a few moves to choose from. Queen h3 is looks strong, but it's actually just enough for a draw because black has king g6. After queen g4, black just needs to head back, and now white is kind of stuck and can't really break out. So queen h3 doesn't work. However, the simplest move, rook takes c6, just wins on the spot because I can't take on e6 due to queen g7. And now the move rook e7 is threatened. And if I play something like rook f8, just simply rook takes, rook takes, and just bring the other rook into the game, and this position is completely winning for white. Because black is completely stuck. If the rook comes here, then queen h3 check first. And after king e6, the rook just sweeps into the back rank. And after the rook sweeps into the back rank, Black's king is going to get mated sooner or later. And a sample line is bishop c6 because black has to wait. Queen g4. King takes f6. Queen h4. King g6. So this move just to free up more space. And here just rook h8. That quiet move forces bishop e8 or something to allow some escape route. But here rook h6. And here if king f5, queen f4 is mate and one. So in this position, king g7, and after rook h7 check, white wins the queen, and will have a queen for a rook and a bishop. Now normally, that is not too big of a deficit, but keep in mind that white is three pawns up, so 
this position is completely ruined for white. But rook a d1, as played in the game, was a big miss instead of the move rook takes e6. And so here I played rook takes e6, rook takes c6, queen takes f6, h4. And here I played queen g7, which actually allows white some more chances after rook takes e6. However, instead, rook f7 would have been a better move. However, after queen g7, my opponent played queen h3, and then I suddenly realized that my clock was almost extinct. There was no room left on my clock, so I have to blitz out move. So, bishop d5, first extremely natural move. c4, which gives up a pawn, but I could have found this better move, rook f3, which completely breaks through white's position. The queen cannot come out no matter where it goes. So the queen actually has to go back to h2, but then queen a1 is mate. I could have found this tactic, but I didn't. So, time. And after bishop takes c4, here my opponent played h5, and here there are many moves that work. You can just take the free a2 pawn, but instead here I played rook g8. And after king h2, here I missed probably the worst tactic that I've found. So here, I'll give you three seconds to find a tactic that wins on the spot. Three, two, one. Yeah, you should have spot this. It's probably queen e5. And if you spot this, you can be safe to assure that you're a better tactics player than me, But although I was in time trouble. So basically, I need to think, I might need to play some more puzzle rush to find these tactics on the spot because queen e5 check would have won for me immediately. However, instead I played queen g4 which forces a queen trade. But now this position is still winning. But now, because of my time, I wasn't able to hang on to all my pawns. And after blissing out a few of these moves, after f4 here, I decide to trade off one of my pawns, which is my first mistake. And here, my opponent still had 20 something seconds while I was below 10. So I had to blitz out all my moves. After king d7, rook j, rook d2, king d4, rook c2, king e5, b3, rook h7, king e8, and here e4, and after rook, whoops, after rook f2, f4, and here I miss my last chance, and here I mess up, but I should have played c4 here, and although the e6 pawns hang, c3, c2 is a much bigger threat, instead here I decide to play b4 for no reason, and after a takes b4, c takes b4, Rook b7 pick, picks up the pawn over here after something like bishop c4. Rook takes, I decide just to hang on for the draw because I was under 5 seconds right now. And after f5, e takes, e takes. The pawn will be stopped at f7 by my bishop and all I need to do is swing my bishop from these two squares. From a2 to c4 and my rook will protect it. So rook e2, king f6, bishop a2, bishop b3. And as you can see, this is practically what happens for the remaining moves of the game. So, seems simple enough. So, this position was a dead draw for the very end. So, overall, we did not play the best. My opponent played an extremely solid line, but decided to go for this ambitious queen f3, which allowed for all these tactics to take place, and in this position, I was better. And in here, I missed this extremely sharp move, rook g8, which could have just won on the spot. And after f4, e takes, or after queen f4, g5, or after queen g4, just take a pawn. After g5, it was a draw, but my opponent decided to go for something more ambitious. After here was a draw, but my opponent decided to bring his rook to d6, which allowed bishop d5, and queen takes f6, but obviously rook d8 was the move I played, and here my opponent played rook takes e6 which he missed, rook a d1, and now I was able to reclaim an edge in this position. And here I completely missed this extremely good move, queen e5 check, which just completely wins on the spot. And finally, in the end game, all these moves, I skip, whoops, my bad. So here, yeah, b4, final mistake, that completely blew up my position. And after the rook takes b4, this position was a dead draw. And 
nothing else was played. So this was my game against Grandmaster Simon Williams. I hope that you enjoyed this game. If you have any positive feedback for what I should do for my next video other than my Title Tuesday coverage, then feel free to leave something in the comments. And if you really enjoyed it, you can possibly like or even subscribe. And if you weren't too satisfied, then tell me something that I can improve on next. And here, because when I was young, I used to always be a big fan of Simon Williams, and I bought tons of his courses, and drawing, and drawing Simon Williams in this tournament felt great for me because I was technically beating one of my mentors because I have learned from Simon Williams so many times, and I give a big appreciation to him. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one when I'm trying my best doing my Title Tuesdays. So I hope that you had a good time, and I'll see you soon. Bye.